our next section is we are going to turn quadratic equations um, that are in our standard form into what we call factored form, um, which we already learned how to solve in a previous lessons. Um, so to kind of figure out where this is coming from is if I have two binomials, We taught you how to multiply those together. So let's go ahead and multiply those together. And one of the methods I taught you how to multiply them together was FOIL. So first times first, x times x is x squared. Outer would be x times q. I'm gonna write this as qx. Inner is p times x, which is px. And then my last is p times q. And all of these have plus signs in between of them because they're um, pluses. So the final answer would be x squared. Both of these have x's in them. So that would be p plus q x. Then I have plus pq. So this is our c term. This is x squared plus bx plus c, where my b is equal to p plus q, and my c is equal to p times q. So in order for me to factor something that looks like this to start out with, I want to find two numbers that add the p plus q and that multiply the p times q. So that's where the thought process comes in for us to be able to factor these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do about five or six examples, then I'm going to go to the IXL and continue doing some examples on here. So first example, x squared plus 5x plus 6. I want two numbers that add to 5 that multiply to 6. That would be a 2 and a 3. So my answer here would be x plus 2. That's my p. And x plus 3. And we're done. Next example, w squared is equal to, uh, no, nope. w squared minus 7w plus 12. I want two numbers that add a negative 7 that multiply 12. And that would be a negative 3 and a negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. So my answer would be w minus 3 times w minus 4. Um, next two examples. We're going to do n squared minus 3n minus 40. I need two numbers that add negative 3 that multiply to negative 40. Um, I'm going to go through the whole thought process if you don't know these. To get a 40, I've got multiple ways to do it. It's 1 in 40, 2 in 20, um, 3 doesn't go in it, 4 goes into it 10 times, and 5 and 8. Okay. One of the signs has to be positive, the other one has to be negative. Because to multiply to get a negative, that's the way I've got to do it. 
Okay, the biggest number has to be a negative. So I need to see what this is. 1 minus 40 is negative 39. 2 minus 20 is negative 18. 4 minus 10 is negative 6. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. That's, the, in fact, the one I want to use. I have a positive 5 and a negative 8. So my, I would have n plus 5 times n minus 8. Last example before homework, uh, the IXL stuff, we're going to do m squared plus 8m minus 9. So in this case, I need two numbers that add to 8, that multiply to negative 9. I'm going to have a positive and a negative. Um, in order to get the 8, I'm going to have 9 minus 1. So my answer is going to be m plus 9 times m minus 1. So those are the examples and how you do it. Again, Your factors are going to be two numbers that multiply to the middle number. I mean, multiply to the last number and add to the middle number. Let's go to IXL. At 2.5, there's only one thing here. Let's see, let me zoom in a little bit. Now, when we do these, I don't necessarily, I would use a whiteboard to make the little crisscross thing. Um, so I'm going to actually drag it over a little bit. Drag this one over a little. So if I were doing this, I would just make the little crisscross on the whiteboard. I need two numbers that add to 13. That multiply to 22, and that's 11 and a 2. I need to move my keyboard so I can type. So I would actually type, and here's where people get these wrong in IXL. They put X's instead of D's here. I'm going to go D plus 11 times D plus 2. Um, next one, I need two numbers that add to 24, that multiply to 23. That would be 1 and 23. Make sure you use it. Oops, get a key. I'm going to do W plus 1 times W plus 23. Okay, that's the easier ones. Um, this one would be one in, um, so I'm going to go up another level. There's four levels. I'm going to do some examples of all four levels. Okay, this one, the need to add 22 and multiply a negative 23. Um, that would be a 23 and a negative 1. Oops, I keep on hitting a key when I go move. So I'm going to get z plus 23 times z minus 1. Okay, that was a level 2 type question. Go to a level 3. In this case, I want to add the 24, and I want to multiply. I'm going to add to 10 and multiply to 24. That would be 6 and 4. So I have a W plus 6. W plus 4. Now it doesn't matter which way you are, write the factors. I could have put W plus 4 times W plus 6, but make sure you have the parentheses and are using the correct letter. 
That was a level three question, a level four. Difference between levels threes and fours are just bigger numbers that you have to be able to come up with multiples of. So in this case, this one's actually easy. I want to add to negative 46, multiply to negative 47. That would be negative 47 times one. Do another one here in a second. So m minus 47 times m plus one. And one more of these. Now, the way I would do it is, again, if you can do these in your head, you don't necessarily need to use a piece of paper. Um, I always write out my template. I have a D in something and a D in something. I need two numbers that multiply to 10 that add to negative 7. So it's going to be negative 2 and negative 5. Okay, um, that is basically how we factor things that have a leading coefficient of one. I'm gonna go back to the piece of paper. Um, the work should be fairly straightforward if you know your multiplication tables. Um, take your time and make sure that you're adding to the middle number and that you're multiplying to get the last number before you actually type in any of your answers. It should not take you very long to complete it. Use any extra time that you have to start making up any of your stuff that you haven't finished yet.